Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Everybody's wide awake. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for sharing a portion of your Thursday morning with us. We appreciate that. Um, we've got a lot of folks here from industry. We've got some folks from education. Uh, we've got folks from government. Uh, Mark's going to recognize everybody that's here in a, in a few minutes, make sure we, we recognize everyone. We've got our council president here. We've got uh, Doug Eckerty, who's uh, now running Job Source and Work One. And so we've got a lot of good folks in the room for this conversation. We will be sharing with you today what we've been able to accomplish in the first three classes of the Anderson Advanced Manufacturing Program and what we hope to accomplish in the next two between now and the end of the year. Some of the lessons that we've learned, some of the changes that we've made, and how we hope to serve you better in providing you with work-ready candidates. So it's my uh, pleasure at this point to introduce the one person in the room that I can point to and say, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have this program. And that's my boss, the Mayor of Anderson, Thomas Broderick, Jr. Mayor. Well, th thank you, Greg. I appreciate that, uh, those remarks. The reality is, of course, none of this uh, would uh, occur if not for the efforts of a whole lot of people. Uh, many of you are in this room today, and as, as Greg said a minute ago, uh, Mark Slayton, who's done a great job in working to uh, operate this program, will get up and uh, recognize and make sure we don't, hope we don't miss anybody. Uh, everybody here is instrumental to, to what we do. About three and a half years or so ago, when I first uh, became the mayor, uh, I had the chance and the occasion to first uh, meet what we refer to as the Manufacturers Roundtable, uh, which is what this event is uh, here today. Uh, it was originated a few years back uh, with uh, Greg being uh, very much involved in that, uh, that organization. And the purpose of it, of course, was to bring the new manufacturers, what we consider the advanced manufacturing, if you will, but really all manufacturers and business leaders together uh, at one time, from time to time, in order to discuss uh, the needs and the concerns uh, of those businesses and what it is that we as a community can do together and what we as a city government can do uh, to assist you. And so over time, that has continued to grow and continued to build. And we've brought in not only those entities, but also we've brought in educators. Uh, we've brought in our local schools, our universities uh, that we're so fortunate to have here in the community. And so coming together and working together, we tried to advance the cause of having people have better employment, better opportunities, uh, make sure that, that schools have plenty of kids, that businesses have uh, folks to draw upon that can help make them profitable and keep them in business. One of the, the constant themes that, that began from way back then until, until today obviously has remained, and that is workforce, that we need a good, viable workforce to be able to, to get the, these, uh, these jobs done. And of course, there's many components to what it takes to, to have a good workforce. And all of you could get up here and, and give a similar uh, discussion to, uh, and, and talk to us about your trials and tribulations in that. But we know that it starts, of course, when kids are very young. It, it starts with working with kids as they begin to grow and with their parents and their grandparents and the folks that raise them. And then, of course, into our schools and the training that they receive and so forth. But then as they become uh, early young adults, they need also additional help to help move them forward. And so we begin to look, and as we traveled, and Greg and I have had the, the good fortune to be able to go along with the rest of our economic development team uh, to go around not just the, the country and the state, but also uh, the world, to be able to solicit businesses to come to our community and give us a, a look. And when we speak to them, they all tell us the same thing. It's all about workforce. And in fact, they tell us it's not just here locally. It's all across the United States. And quite frankly, for the most part, it's all across the world. And so the reality, again, is what can local communities do to help in their neck of the woods, so to speak, to give us a, a stronger opportunity to have a good workforce and therefore a stronger community. So we begin to talk about what might make sense, and that's what we did that eventually became known as what we presently are calling AMP, which is Advanced, Anderson Advanced Manufacturing Program. And what it is, for those of you who haven't been here before, and, and I can talk more about it here later, but just the, the nutshell, is that it's a four-week intense program that requires a lot of partnerships. One of our major partners in this is Purdue University. We couldn't do it without them, this beautiful building we have here, but it's not just the building, it's the, it's the staff, it's their willingness to partner with us to allow us to use their facility as we do this training. And there's a lot of other partners as well that Mark's gonna to refer to here in a few minutes. 
But what we do is we bring these folks in, and they're either unemployed or underemployed. They make an application. They work with our, our friends at Job Source and Workforce Development, and they make application, and we take them through a work keys process to make sure they have certain skills that we think is going to work out in terms of training and so forth. And then once they're accepted, they go into this training program. The training program initially was open to about 30 persons at a time, but realistically what we've kind of determined is a 20, 25 number is, a, is the best that we can handle, and through attrition, that's sort of where we end up anyway. And so we take these folks through this program, and it teaches all sorts of aspects uh, of really what we would all consider many, in many respects as soft skills, uh, but it also teaches some hard skills as well, uh, and it teaches you know, folks how to work as a team. Uh, it gives them a lot of self-confidence, and then we eventually move through, of course, through that entire process, it's, and it's very strict. I mean, we have sort of a no tolerance. We, we don't want to be mean, but we, we have a no tolerance. You know, you, you can't be late. You've got to show up. You leave your cell phone in the car and so forth. You do the sort of things that you as employers would expect of your employees because if they can't do it in a classroom, they're probably not going to be able to do it on the, on the manufacturing floor. And so we've been very successful. We're very proud of, of the outcome. Uh, after the four weeks, we have our graduation. We've had those graduations right here in this very room. And if you've not been to one, and I know today we have a couple of graduates here that may have a chance to speak briefly, but if you haven't been to one, you can't imagine uh, really how, how appreciative the folks are that go through these programs. Uh, they stand right up here at this podium oftentimes and tell their stories, and they will, will tell you. Uh, we have today, for example, we have a lot of dignitaries in the room. Uh, they're folks that all of us, we all interact together often. We don't think too much about that. But to them, it's a super big deal. They sit there and they say, you know, I would have never thought in a million years I'd be sitting here, you know, next to a president of a university or a state leader uh, or a mayor or what have you. They can't believe it. And it gives them a great deal of self-esteem, and they really appreciate that. But more importantly, they've gained some skills that they can take into the workplace. And so far, and of course, this is a moving target, we've had three graduating classes. Right now, 78% of the folks that have graduated uh, from those classes are getting or have gotten jobs uh, after they graduate. And these are people that previously were either well underemployed and often not employed at all. The idea that there aren't people out there, that there aren't people that can pass a drug test, that there aren't people um, that are willing to come to work day after day is not true. We just have to reach out, locate them, give them those basic skills again that they've left behind for one reason or another and get them rebooted into the workforce. And that's what we've been doing. And it's, and it's been working. The city of Anderson is highly committed to this. Uh, we have invested uh, quite a bit of money into it. We're the primary uh, sponsor when it comes to actual dollars. And then about 50% of all the costs attributable, which is about $48,000 per person to, or, or to, to do this program, uh, comes from the in-kind contributions from all of our partners, including, again, Purdue. So again, we thank everyone that, that uh, is here today. We thank Purdue and the west, rest of our partners for everything you guys do. This is a very important program. It is having success that far exceeds our expectations. Uh, not that we set the bar super low, but we obviously didn't know when we started where it was gonna go. One of the things we do do and we'll continue to do, and we wanna make sure you as partners understand this, is that if you see things, as you interview these new candidates, as you hire these new candidates, if you see things that are lacking that should have been attended to, please let us know. Let Mark know. We want to add it to our program. We want to make sure that these programs are set up in a way that makes this portion of education relevant to the workforce that we're trying to, to, to fill today. And these students know, we tell them, this is a beginning. This isn't the end. This is a beginning. This is a start. This gets your foot in the door, gets you going. But you have to continue forward if you expect to have great success. And from what I can see so far, folks are taking that uh, really to heart. One quick little, um, I guess, uh, advertisement I'd like to shout out real quick. We have, over the last three and a half or so years, been involved in what we call our annual Mayor's Ball. Uh, the Mayor's Ball is where we raise funds to give back to our local schools. And I mentioned a moment ago that we work closely with our schools, including our local schools, uh, both uh, the private ones as well as the public ones. Over those last three and a half years, we've given out $120,000 in grants directly to teachers, and those grants are used in the classroom for students. Uh, we raise the money through sponsorships at the Mayor's Ball as well as folks in attendance uh, who may come. It's September 13th this year. Uh, we obviously have sponsorships available. In the past, many of the companies that are sitting in this room today uh, have been sponsors. I just want, again, to remind you guys that we're doing that and ask for your consideration to being a sponsor. 
Uh, if you wish to do so, simply call up to the mayor's office, 648-6000. It's a great cause. Uh, we have given 107 so-called scholarships or grants so far in that in those three and a half years. And I can tell you when I go around to those classrooms and I see those teachers and I see those students when we deliver these, they're super excited. Again, going back to this idea of eventual workforce, these students are your eventual workforce. The areas that they concentrate in on these grants are usually in the STEM areas, and it has been very successful. And I see these students that are very bright, very capable, but need continued support from us. So again, if you can help us at the Mayor's Ball, be appreciated, 648 uh, When you can call, you can ask for uh, Julie or Samantha, or you can also talk to Greg. So again, thank you. It's my honor to be here today. And again, congratulations to all of you, and thank you to all of our sponsors who've given so much to make this all a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Broderick. Before I go into my part, I want to introduce my partner in this endeavor, Corey Sharp of Purdue. Without Purdue's assistance in this program, we wouldn't be as far as we are now. And Corey is going to recognize our excellent staff as well. Corey, please come up. Thank you, Mark. Um, I just want to take a couple of moments to, uh, first of all, thank the mayor and the city uh, for their efforts in putting the program together. Uh, but it really isn't me. It really is my team that makes this program work. And I'd like to recognize them. And not all of them are here today, but the ones that are. Jerry Paul, if you can stand. Lori Barnett. Uh, Chris Beck. Rick Dwinger. Um, they all make this program work. Uh, Jerry and Lori are in the classroom day in and day out with the folks that are in the AMP program, whether it's helping uh, the AMP students learn how to use calipers and micrometers or how to avoid conflict or deal with conflict. Um, Chris and Rick are behind the scenes helping with uh, mock interviews, organizing lunch, doing whatever it takes to get things done. I also want to thank Steve and Sweeney. And Steve, if you could stand up also. Steve has been an instrumental part in the AMP program here locally. Uh, without Steve, his expertise in lean and the use of his um, lean simulator, the lean environmental si simulator, it's in the back. If you've not seen it, you should see it today and talk with Steve. Uh, these folks are instrumental in making this program uh, go. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> the last thing I want to mention, uh, just quickly, people think, wow, why is Purdue doing this? Uh, this is part of our land-grant mission that started in 1869 by Abraham Lincoln. This is part of what we do, and that's what Purdue Polytechnic statewide locations are here for, is to not only provide opportunity for students to earn a degree, but to give back to the community. And obviously the city of Anderson has given Purdue Polytechnic a lot of resources and we are always very thankful for that. But when President Daniels was here a couple of months ago, I shared with him about the AMP program, the successes we were having, as well as our board of trustees. They were tickled to death that this was here in Anderson. Uh, they knew the Anderson story and President Daniels said this, the uh, rise and redevelopment of Anderson is one of Indiana's best success stories. That is his quote. And, uh, and that's because of a lot of you in this room, Mayor Broderick, our manufacturers, and we are just proud to be a part of the Anderson community, proud to have this program, and proud to serve the citizens of Anderson, Indiana. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. I want to recognize some individuals in our crowd today. Uh, Kevin Schultz, representing Congress Lady Brooks' office. The president of Vincennes University, Chuck Johnson. The president of our city council, Rebecca Crooms. The Anderson Board of Works, David Ikes, Jack Keesling, and Richard Sims. <laughs> Doug Eckerty, the new executive director of Job Source Work One. <laughs> Deputy Director Vince Smith. <laughs> A great partner, Penny Henderson from the Anderson Impact Center. 
Dr. Terry Truitt, the new CEO of Flagship. <laughs> Our friends with Ivy Tech and Anderson University. <laughs> we also have Polly Redman, who runs the local adult basic education program. If our, the first question we ask our candidates, do you have your high school diploma? If they answer no, they go to Polly's program or they go to the Excel Center. They're immediately referred. Okay, AMP. AMP started uh, discussions about two years ago, a little over two years ago. We were exposed to the program in Lafayette called RAMP. Several of us who are also in the crowd now we journeyed to Lafayette on a very cold and snowy day, and we learned of a program that was having great success. And when we came back, we, all of the individuals that traveled together, we stayed in touch, and we started to think about how we could create such a program here. And though RAMP feeds basically one or two industries, we knew that we had to modify our program to fit a community. We have everything from food processing to tier one automotive supply. So we had to adjust and, and modify our program. So AMP is, as the mayor alluded to, it's a 160 hours job training program. It's four weeks long. Our target candidates are individuals at the 200% poverty level threshold and below. Our, our candidates are workers in transition, displaced workers those formerly incarcerated, college dropouts, veterans in transition, low-wage workers. Pending and recent high school graduates, we're building great bridges now with partners in, the, in that community, JAG students, and of course our adult education students. Initial recruitment for our candidates comes through many networks. They reach out to me, and then we funnel those individuals to job source of Madison County. Job Source recruits, our Anderson Impact Center recruits. We have new partners on board, Aspire, Alternatives, Dove Harbor, and the Children's Bureau. So it truly is becoming a community-based program. I'd like to recognize quickly our employer partners that we have because it's growing. We have NTN, NTK, Red, Gold, and Searmax. They have been there since day one of these conversations. We also have Barber Manufacturing. We have High Pro Donaldson on board now. We have Precision Strip on board now. And we have a new partner, Ertl Enterprises, with Dan Ertl. One reason we needed this program desperately in our area is we used to try to come up with a number of how many individuals in our area, Madison County, were not participating in the workforce. Uh, a, a study developed by the Indiana Institute of Working Families gave us a, a staggering number. They came up with 44,000 individuals that were not engaged in the workforce in Madison County alone. Even if we discount that for some margin of error, even 20%, we're looking at 35,000 individuals that are not engaged in the workforce. We had to do something. Again, the mayor stepped up with funding for this program Greg came on board with economic development while I was still with Work One, and it became a total communication and planning of a process, and this is how we created AMP. We pay our, our trainees, they're no longer candidates, they're trainees once they come into our program, and we can't expect anybody to endure four weeks of training without some kind of income. So again, we stepped up with funding, the mayor and the city, we pay these individuals $10 an hour during training. We hope we secure additional funding. We can increase that stipend to $12 an hour. Our partners, Lori, Jerry, Steve, myself, the employment partners bring their staff in, their training personnel. This is truly a, a great team that is in board on this. Just a little bit about our program, uh, the curriculum. During week one, we go through things such as work hygiene. They're introduced to all of our employer partners. We go through daily work conditioning, work hardening as we call it. 
they're introduced to 5S, and they spend, we spend a significant amount of time with 5S and lean. We'd go on to safety, ergonomics. We'd go through conflict resolution with role playing one on one. Continuous improvement is always there. That's a big one that we stress. We, we teach them about gauging, and we also allow them to do some job shadowing at the employer partner sites. We move into calipers, tinsel testing, effective listening, statistical process. We always focus on work conditioning every day. Then they move on to Steve's wonderful lean simulator. And this is where we get to see the magic come full circle. They learn about the teamwork. We kind of give them the rough idea and then we throw them to the wolves and they go in there and inevitably they always lose approximately 35,000 or 40,000 on their first run. Then we sit down and we debrief. And this is all trainee led discussions. They see where they can improve. They see what they can do better. And then they go back at it. Our last class, they broke even on the second run and went into the black on the third run. This was beautiful. Our fourth week, we're getting them ready for employment. We're going through mock interviews. Their resumes are all in order. We talk to each other about how we want to be in the workforce. And then we have our graduation ceremony. If you've not attended our graduation ceremony, you must come. It's, it's truly a moving experience. Many of these individuals have not earned a certificate of this nature in their life. They are given the National Career Readiness Certificate through Work Keys, and then they have the Purdue Advanced Manufacturing Certificate. To date, on a $144,000 investment, we have over $900,000 in annual salaries. 78% of our graduates were offered employment. 31 of these individuals have seen a wage gain of $3 or more an hour, and mostly it's more. 30 of these individuals came from unemployment. 14 came from underemployment. This is truly a, a program that we really need. But I've invited a gentleman here to speak to you this morning that came to our first cohort, Thomas Rich. I remember the first time Thomas sat down in my office and we had a discussion and he said, I'm all in. Now, post your 90 days at NTN, yeah, you've moved on, you've seen wage increase, but I'd like you to share a little bit with the audience what AMP means to you, Thomas. Please come up. Thomas Rich. Well, <clears throat> hello everybody. So, I guess I could tell you a little bit about my experience here and uh, what really led me to, to uh, look into the AMP program in the first place. Uh, last year, about this time, I was traveling around America. I was installing commercial kitchen equipment anywhere from Louisiana to Minnesota, uh, Chicago, all over the place. It was a decent job. I made a good amount of money, uh, but I didn't really like traveling all that much. So I was looking for a career change. Uh, I was born here in Anderson, so I knew a lot of people who worked in the factories. Uh, my dad retired from the factories. A lot of our, my friends families retired from the factories, but I never really thought about doing that when I was younger, you know. Uh, but as I got older, uh, I thought, well, maybe I should look into this. So uh, I was tired of traveling, and I looked in the paper one day, and there was a, an article in the, in the local paper about the AMP program, and I thought that'd be a good way to kind of see if maybe this manufacturing stuff was uh, right for me, you know. Uh, I had a various skill set, you know, and, and uh, I just didn't really have uh, any idea what would actually go on in these factories. So I got to travel uh, to the factories and kind of shadow and see what they were doing, you know. Uh, got to learn a lot about lean manufacturing principles, uh, a lot of communication skills, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not used to speaking in front of so many people. <laughs> But uh, so, yeah, so I, got, I got graduated with the first cohort, and now I'm with NTN, with Mr. Thomas here. Uh, I really enjoy my job. I uh, look forward to many years with him and uh, helping give back to the community in any way I can. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can ask me or I can just go sit down. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Thomas. I'd like to introduce Jerry Paul at this time. He, he has a few words he would like to share with you. Please come up, Jerry. Good morning, everybody. Glad everybody's here. Um, I'm here as an instructor today at uh, Purdue. I teach industrial engineering technology subjects, as, as you heard. But also, I might share that this experience I've had teaching the, the AMP people, um, and I teach them five different modules that are engineering related. They are really uh, a group of students I've found that really are eager to soak up information. And that's somewhat different than our normal students sometimes. So it's been a good experience for, for us, different experience. So, but I'm here today as an instructor. Um, you know that Purdue Polytechnic, our focus is on trying to have students learn, not in the classroom so much, but actually taking the class into, the, into a company, dealing with real world problems, real world data. And so the class I'm teaching this fall is statistical process control. And in that class, we look at processes with the eye to two things. Is the process stable? Is it in control? Is it operating with very little variance? And secondly, is the process capable of generating the tolerance that the process is supposed to hit? The parts, are they within tolerance? That's the two focuses. So I'm here because we want to go into, into a company and deal and look at real world data and do a project like that at companies. The students um, would go into a, into a company two times a week for two hours, so there'd be four hours a week. I would be there with them all the time or somebody from Purdue. Every company, regardless of what kind of company you are, has processes that can be looked at. Manufacturing companies use manufacturing processes or steps to make a product or steps to assemble a product or steps that you go through to, to box up and ship a part out the door. That's a process that we can look at. A process of steps you go through to, to do an invoice. That's a process. Or steps you go through to enter a client into a da database. So you don't have to be a manufacturing company to have processes. So we would like to talk to any companies that are interested in having our students come in. We'd start about the mid part of September. We come in most of the uh, weeks between now and the end of, end of the semester in December. And then at the end, in December, our, our project students would come and make a presentation to your management of what they found and their recommendations. So this is a good thing. This is how our students learn real well about the concepts we teach by going into companies. The companies get some free engineering studies. This is, doesn't cost you anything. Uh, you get a chance to see some recommendations. Look at some students that down the road you may be interested in hiring. They'll be there and you can see and look, see what they look like. So I'm going to be here, stay at the end of the meeting. If any companies are interested in talking to me, I'd certainly like to do that and answer any other questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. I'd like to bring up Nathan Letterman of the Boy Scouts of America. He has a special announcement he'd like to share with the crowd this morning. Nathan? Thank you, sir. Hello, I'm Nathan Letterman, District Executive for Madison County Scouts. You may think, why do Scouts? Why are they hanging out in these technological arenas? One of the things that we are doing right now, and we've just brought in for the first time, is STEM Scouts. So this uniform with a white lab coat, we started in Pendleton in the troops and packs, and we're getting them connected to industry in sixth grade. They also start an exploring program where we connect with local universities, um, Ivy Tech, Anderson University, Purdue, trying to connect with everybody within the area. And when they're six years old, if they want to be a police officer, or if they want to be in the technological field, or if they want to be a nurse, they can get assigned to that, and they will work with a professional all the way up to 21 years old. So this is a, a tremendous piece for us because uh, scouts, they're making that transition. I just met with the Anderson Municipal Airport, so we may have the first aviation post uh, in Anderson as well. I graduated from from Anderson and Madison County, and uh, I just love this community. Uh, my 10 second commercial is, after you eat at the mayor's dinner, okay, and you're filled up in September, please come in October uh, to the Paramount. It's October 22nd, uh, 5.30, our distinguished guest is gonna be President Pistol, and uh, we're gonna be honoring him that night. Weber Grill is cooking, the food is good. 
Part of my job is sampling. So I, <laughs> I uh, took great pride in that. And uh, it's just a great way to sit there and invest in our youth. Mayor talked about the grassroots piece of this. So we're literally going into kindergarten and getting them excited about staying in Madison County and surrounding areas and being part of what we're doing. So if anyone wants to talk to me, uh, I have slips for this too. But one of the things we do during the dinner is we raise funds so that these kids could go to camp and be part of Scouts and be part of STEM and the community. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Nathan. We can always count on trains being on time here. Never fails. I'm going to introduce two ladies from the Department of Workforce Development. I spent three and a half years working for the Indiana Department of Workforce Development, and I got to know Holly Meyer very well. I know their programs, and I know what she's going to talk to you about. But on a side note, knowing these programs that they offer very well has allowed me to work with a local employer, Dan Ertl, with Ertl Enterprises. Dan needed a good employee, and we got him a, a gentleman from the AMP, one of our AMP graduates. But discussing with Dan his plans for the future and also discussing how Next Level Jobs program could reimburse him for training, he accelerated his hiring process and brought in another individual. And this is a great example of how we can tie it all together with not only with state agencies, but with local programs, our community partners. This is just, I feel this is how it should be done. Thank you, Dan, for taking that jump and leap of faith with bringing in the other individual. But I want to bring up Holly Meyer and Lisa Metcalf from the Indiana Department of Workforce Development to reacquaint you all with the Next Level Jobs program. Holly, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to speak to you this morning um, about Next Level Jobs, specifically the employer training grant. Um, Next Level Jobs is a program that Governor Holcomb rolled out two years ago. It started in August of 2017. Uh, we were given $10 million to allocate to Hoosier employers to skill um, or to hire and skill up individuals to middle skill positions. Through some research at the Department of Workforce Development, we realized that over the next 10 years, we are going to have to fill nearly a million jobs, if not more. Um, through attrition, because of attrition, and also just job growth. Um, the biggest impact we can make on that huge, on that large uh, scale of positions is in the middle skill, which we, de we defined as higher than a high school diploma, but not quite an associate's degree. Um, so with all that information and then the funds that we received from uh, Governor Holcomb, we were able to allocate in just under 10, 11 months. Just under 11 months, we allocated all $10 million dollars um, the, that grant program came to an end June 30th, 2019, um, so just about two months ago, and uh, we were able to train approximately 4,000 Hoosiers with that money, 4,000 employed Hoosiers through that money. Um, in the uh, state of the state, Governor Holcomb actually doubled our funding, and then that was made official uh, through the General Assembly last spring. and. Um, Lisa is going to speak to you about where the grant has gone now and now that we've started on July 1st. Good morning. Um, how many of you took advantage of the um, last round of funding? Okay. Good news for you guys. You are eligible for an additional $50,000 in the round 3.0. Um, in terms of um, the programs and things, a lot of it is the same. Um, as Holly said, we have $20 million this year that um, we will be um, allocating to our employers. Um, it's for your new hires and your current employees. Uh, you can, um, it's skills training, it has to be at least 40 hours, and um, it'll be $5,000 per employee or 50K per company, just like it was in the last iteration. Um, it's a quick application if you haven't taken advantage of it. It's, you know, we call it a grant, but that's a little bit of a misnomer. It's really a reimbursement, a training reimbursement program. 
It takes three minutes to apply online. It's very easy, and um, we certainly would encourage you to do that. I mean, you have the AMP program, which is very successful. And for those of you that are hiring those students, this is a great way for them to go ahead and be able to continue upskilling and help your company as well. Um, do we have any questions? Do you have anything you want to add, Holly? All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Holly and Lisa, for coming this morning. Again, the website you would like to go to for Next Level Jobs is nextleveljobs.org, or you can simply reach out to me at the City of Anderson or to Ed Miller at Work One. We can talk you through the process and get you to the next step of meeting with these ladies. I'd like to also say that our AMP program is Next Level Jobs approved. Employers, if you have your eye on a candidate and you would like to kind of pre-qualify them before you bring them in, you can send them to AMP. It's now on the program list. Our next AMP is going to be on September 9th. This will be AMP number four. We've changed our criteria and made it increasingly stronger. We now do a national background check on all of our candidates. And our selection, because of the response, our selection of candidates is even, the criteria is far stronger than what it was in our previous cohorts. But now what I'd like to do is open up for any questions you would like to have concerning AMP, next level jobs of that nature. 